Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we get started uh, talking about the press release that we have coming out uh, or that just came out. Uh, um, we're going to wear a, a helmet sticker uh, on the helmets uh, down at the uh, Tax Act Texas Bowl. Um, a lot of case staters and fellow Kansas and Western Kansas were dealt that devastating blow on, the, on December 15th when the, uh, the fire was fueled by the 100 plus mile an hour winds and burned over 400,000 acres and destroyed homes, vehicles, barns, um, thousands of head of cattle and, and uh, our hearts go out to um, the people in Western Kansas and, and it's just a small thing for us uh, to show our support uh, for uh, people th throughout the state that uh, have had such a uh, uh, impacted their lives so much. So uh, we'll wear a, a helmet sticker uh, on, on the fourth and uh, show our support uh, for those people and, and our thoughts and prayers are with everybody uh, that uh, had, had has had so much loss. So um, moving on to, to football, we uh, just finished up uh, another practice this morning. We'll have two more practices here before we cut them loose for about five or six days and um, reconvene, uh, I think it's like the 29th or 30th and then uh, start our prep again um, for the game on the fourth. We've had uh, really good practices. We'll get, in my mind, six six good practices. Uh, we had a day off in between there, but six good practices before we uh, cut them loose for a little while. So a lot of the game plan is in. Uh, we just need to fine tune some things and, and continue to work our young guys too. That's the other part of everything in our, our, our bowl prep practices we're, we're always working developmental stuff. It's not just LSU stuff. It's, it's working a lot of our younger players, uh, whether it's drill work or teamwork, uh, just to take advantage of this time. And, uh, coach Trues, um, got the developmental guys in the weight room quite a bit too. So it's, a uh, Obviously, it's the, the great reward for all of us to be able to, to continue to practice, continue to develop these players. Is uh, Skyler on track to play in the bowl game you right know, now? He's trending in the right direction, Kellis. Um, he's practiced. Um, we hope he doesn't have any setbacks. And if he doesn't, then uh, in all likelihood, he'll play. Uh, and uh, we're excited about that. And we still have uh, a couple of weeks away, so I, I don't want to, you know, in case we have a setback or anything, but right now he's trending in the right direction. And while we're on the subject of quarterbacks, you added a transfer, the first one you've uh, landed since yep. you've been at Kansas State. What was it about Adrian Martinez that drew you to him, and what do you, why do you think he'll be a good fit for you guys? Well, um, the person, for starters, uh, he was able to come down here and spend some time with Coach Klein and I, and uh, um, uh, competitor, um, really intelligent, a really mature um, fit in with our guys uh, around, around campus. And, and I think he came to a practice and just, uh, and, and I've watched him over the last few years. And um, he's a, a, a true dual threat guy that can run it, can throw it. Um, excited for, for him, excited for um, us to bring him aboard and part of the K-State family. I, I think he can be a, a terrific uh, football player. What's the status of his injury? I know he had the shoulder surgery. When would you expect him to be able to? Yeah, I don't think guys? he'll he'll be cut loose full go in, in spring ball. Um, and uh, he might be able to do some things, but he wouldn't be in any contact or I don't know how much he'll be cutting it loose in in, in March. Um, but that's OK. He'd come in and learn the system and uh, learn our guys and learn terminology and continues to to allow uh, ourselves to keep getting the three guys that we have here um, ready to go uh, and continue to progress. You know, Will and, and Jaron and Jake, uh, Max, we've we've decided to move to safety. And I'm excited because Max Marsh is a really good athlete. And so he's going to add some depth and, and get a chance to compete for uh, significant playing time over there for next year. How, how did those other three quarterbacks who were coming back handle the news that you bringing in an older trainer? Well, there, you're going to have competition no matter what, whether it's within the program or or from outside the program. And uh, they have a, a unbelievable relationship and rapport with Coach Klein. Um, and so I know Colin brought him in uh, and visited with them about that. And uh, we, we're always going to try to add um, competition talent to our football team, whether it's you know, a defensive back to an old lineman to a quarterback. And I know that's the, the position everybody looks at, but uh, uh, in general, we're always going to add competition. Uh, since you didn't have the opportunity to play in a bowl game last year, has it been 
more buzz, more excitement around the team this year preparing for LSU? Yeah, absolutely it has. Uh, and uh, for a lot of reasons. One, it gives us another chance to, to be together as a football team. This is a close-knit group of guys that uh, – cares a lot about each other and enjoys each other's company, gives us a chance, like we talked about, of uh, having our developmental guys continue to get a lot of reps, uh, have Coach True work with those guys. It's uh, And for us being the extended or, or late game on January 4th, even though we'll have a little time off, it's really given us almost a full extra month with these guys. And then just uh, with that extra development, what are some of the important things you're looking for to develop the, the younger players? Just continuing to learn our terminology, continuing to learn uh, basic fundamentals of blocking and tackling and getting off blocks and catching the ball. And, and uh, special teams drills have been a big emphasis for us. There's so many things that we do drill work wise uh, on special teams that carries over to offense and defense. And so, um, you know, we've done a really nice job, I think, of bringing these guys along and let and making sure that they understand how important uh, these reps are they're getting because it allows us to kind of uh, decide on some depth charts as, as we get into spring. Among those uh, developmental guys, have any kind of stood out to you over, over this process? Yeah, um, you know, Cody Stuffelbean is a guy that I think is going to be a really impactful guy here. I'm really excited about what uh, Cody has done um, as a guy that nobody would know much about, but he's a Kansan kid that uh, that I, I think the world of. Um, and he's probably the guy that I just see every day keep showing up. In your pre-Texas prep and discussions with Will, was it kind of discussed that, well, maybe the red shirt will be more able to uh, do that on in next year? Well, we we still don't know Skyler's true fate as far as we think he's going to be able to play, and we hope hopefully he is. But if not, then Will will play this game. That's kind of the thought we had going into Texas is there's a chance he's going to play in uh, one, if not two, football games. And, and so, um, you know, you're healthy and you get an opportunity to play. Competitors want to play, and uh, that's what Will is. He's a tremendous competitor. And uh, – He's played a decent amount of football for maybe having to cost him one year and not two years. And so, um, you know, you're, you're healthy, you're, you're able to play. I've seen a lot of situations where you hold somebody back and then the next year they get hurt and you, and you say, you wish you would have. So, um, you know, we kind of have to live in the present right now. And that's what we're doing with, uh, with Will. And so where does your depth kind of check out a running back at present? Um, well, we still have number 22, uh, and, and Deuce is going to get the line share of the reps, and then it, it'll just kind of be uh, running back by committee with everybody else on the roster. How how, how challenging has uh, preparing for LSU been with with all of their opt outs and, and everything? That's been yeah, it's been it's been challenging, but they're still LSU, and uh, I, I know that we as coaches and and our, and our players, especially our older guys, know that. Uh, um, no matter who they put out, there's going to be a pretty, pretty good football player and a guy that uh, even if he hasn't played, uh, maybe it's his opportunity, just like we're going to have some guys that are going to have an opportunity that haven't played a lot of football for us. And that's, um, that's a great thing for college football. It, it's, it's not great when people opt out and don't play in games and, and, but that's, that is what it is. That's not going to change. Um, but it is exciting for the guys that do get an opportunity um, because maybe they were, uh, a guy that felt like he should have been in or uh, somebody that uh, they think really highly of. And, and so we, we know that there's a reason they're at LSU because they're extremely talented players. And uh, no matter if it's somebody that we watched on film or the next guy that steps up, they're going to have really good football players. I know it's hard to prepare for a team. You don't know who exactly is going to play for them, but what do they do schematically offensively and defensively that catches your attention? Um, they run the football on offense and they have a really good offensive line. And most of those guys, I believe are going to play the running backs, a really good player. Uh, that's uh, their bread and butter. And then they run the RPO game off it with some, you know, uh, some, slants and glances and and bubbles and things and then they can stretch the field because they have wide receivers that can really go um so offensively uh, they're really explosive but yet they can probably just pound it at you all day um and then on defense um they're going to come after us i, I really believe that they're going to be a pressure team that's what they've gone to uh the last maybe third of the season um played and 
played a lot more man coverage. Now maybe they'll maybe they'll change again, but we've seen it on both playing zone early and then man late. But uh, um, just the ability to put pressure on the passer is is one of our biggest concerns because they have really good players up front and then they bring a lot of different blitzes. The date of this game is odd, but with everything going on right now, are you worried about kids going home for four, five, six days? Maybe someone getting in their ear about the transfer portal or getting exposed to this variant. Absolutely, on all accounts. And but that's uh, everybody else is going through the same thing too. Um, and you know, right now, just as everything is trending, would have been great to play all these bowl games before Christmas. Maybe we'd have gotten more of them in. And knock on wood, we continue to get them all in. Uh, that's that's the hope. Uh, it, it's a concern. We talk about it with our guys uh, quite a bit. And we know we're sending them home, but you got to give them a break. It's it's Christmas, and and we just got to make sure that uh, um, vaccinated or non-vaccinated kids are still getting this. But from what we understand, and so um, got to do a great job protecting yourself, and more importantly, protecting the loved ones you're going back to see. What what quarterback? What LSU quarterback are you preparing for in this game right now? Uh, it's a good question. I I, I mean, um, the young kid for starters. You know, um, the Nussmeyer, which we probably believe he'll play, but who knows? Uh, that's kind of the thought right now. But, you know, they've played a couple different guys throughout the season, and, and maybe they have different skill sets. I mean, I, they know better than we do, but their offense is still going to run through uh, the running backs and the O-line. Any opt outs on the team? Is everybody we we have not. We've still had some flu bug guys. You know, we're still missing the guy here or there, a few each day, it seems like. But uh um knock on wood, we uh continue to stay healthy and, and uh, guys stay with the program. Why do you think uh this bowl game means so much to seniors like Skyler and, and everybody else when seniors elsewhere are opting out? Why are these guys uh, full on board trying to win? Uh, a couple of reasons. One, um you know, a, couple, a few of these guys were a part of the the bowl game when played L, uh, UCLA a few years back, but probably didn't play very much. Um, didn't have success against Navy. A lot of guys were here for that, but uh, Navy was a good football team and had a chance to win and didn't do it. And then last year, I think going through last year, um, as difficult it was, as it was from a COVID standpoint, um, one of the things that I think is so unique about college football is the bowl system, the playoff system, postseason in general, uh, that uh, there was probably a lot of guys bummed last year that that we didn't get an opportunity to play in, in a bowl game. And uh, I know that uh, a number of those seniors want that last opportunity to play together. And uh, what a great opponent and uh, what a great bowl. I heard nothing but phenomenal things about the Texas Bowl. Uh, and how they treat the the student athletes and uh, the experience for our guys and and uh, I know our guys are chomping at the bit because they really want to play together one more time and that's that's a sign of a of a really good group of seniors and leaders um, that have stuck together through an awful long time. Coach, I saw Joe Hall picked up a K State offer recently. I'm assuming you saw him play with your son at Manhattan. What what did you see in him that you liked? I can't really commit comment on that stuff right now. Okay. This one's different. What's your relationship with his dad? I know his dad works here. Are you able to just tell me about how, how you know him? Yeah, Joe's was a great player here. Joe's a uh, senior, and, and, and we hired him my first year here and um, uh, has done a really, really nice job for us and developing our players and stuff. Just with all the recruiting legislation out there, I really can't comment on the other part of that right now. Uh, speaking of recruiting, have you had the, any discussions with the uh, with this past year's seniors yet uh and especially since you're in a bowl game you kind of have to yep. start thinking ahead yeah i have but i'm gonna let those guys uh, announce when they want to announce what they're going to do i think that's that's kind of um i think more appropriate for those guys the ones that there's there's some that are coming back and then there's some that have jobs or, and are going to go play in the nfl and um, I just think it's better for, for those guys to be able to announce that when they want to. Are you pretty sure about what have you had? I guess, do you know pretty much what most of them are? Yeah, are pretty much. There's maybe a couple that are still, uh, up in the air and I have given them that space because if they're not ready to make that decision, um, 
then uh, I'm not going to press upon it. It's too big of a decision for some of these guys that uh, uh, potentially are, are going to be done playing. And when we talked, uh, oh, I think when we had a, a, an open week in early December, uh, asked a few about it. And they said, coach, can I just have more time? And absolutely. They've done so much for K-State football, done so much for me. I can give them a little bit more time. The other transfer portal member, uh, Joshua Hayes, how would you address his impact? Uh, Josh will have a big impact. I know Josh well. I know his family well. He uh, um, was recruited by us at North Dakota State uh, in 2017 as a true freshman. We had some guys get hurt and started uh, at corner in a national championship game and really shut down one of the best receivers uh, in FCS uh, that day. And uh, um, so I know his ability and uh, he's a physical corner. He's a good man coverage guy. Um, we're going to play him at nickel and at corner that um, knows parents really well. And uh, so excited that uh, um, coach Klanderman and myself get another year uh, to end Josh's college days. Uh, Ryan Hennington organized a big fundraiser toy drive event for kids in the community. Just what can you tell us about Ryan and yeah. him putting that all together? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, he asked me about it uh, a couple of weeks back uh, and uh, he was really passionate about it. And that's the way Ryan is and, and uh, his family is and his roommates. I know that uh, Fletch was involved and um, I know that Ross Elder and some other guys were involved, but uh, they raised an awful lot of money and uh, took care of countless families and uh, were able to have those people have a special Christmas, but that's, that's Ryan Hennington and that's uh, our seniors and, and senior class is their first class. And uh, um, he talked about it to our team after practice today uh, about the importance of giving back to this community. And, uh, you know, there's a sellout or close to a sellout for every home game um, because of the kids on our team. We hope the products continue to improve and, and we're, we're working on that. Um, but to support those kids that do a lot for this community is pretty cool. And they love this community. And so, uh, Henny did that and with a bunch of his teammates and, and, uh, uh made a really special Christmas for a lot of families. And then your son, Colby is committed to play football at Kansas Wesleyan. And this past week, their head coach took a position as the head coach at Western Illinois. I was just curious if maybe you've been in contact with him with your familiarity with the Valley. Uh, yeah, I, I congratulated him and probably just similar to the other question. I probably can't comment on that little climbing kid because I don't want him to lose any eligibility as well, but let's just say Colby understands the business and, uh, <laughs> So I said, well, son, this is, this is welcome to college football. And uh, um, he's still going to head on over to Kansas Wesleyan. Well, just uh, on the coaching side of that, I mean, you're, you're familiar, obviously, with the Valley and the challenges that are there because of some of the solid football that's played. But uh, for a coach like Hendrickson moving from Kansas to Wesleyan to Western Illinois, what would you say might be? one of the bigger challenges stepping into a coaching position in that conference? Uh, the physicality and, and you got to be uh, ready to play every week, just like every other conference. But Myers is a really good football coach and look at the success he had at Kansas Wesleyan. And, and you can say it's NAI. I don't care. Football's football. You've heard me say that a million times. Um, I know his dad real well and his dad had great success at Western Illinois. So for Western Illinois to bring another Hendrickson back, smart move because uh, Meyer's going to do a great job there. I want to spotlight three players just from the season and Deuce Vaughn, Felix Anudike, Zoma, and um, Cooper Beebe. Just yep. tell me how important those three guys have been to success. Uh, for starters, they're great leaders. Uh, they're great uh, people off the field. They do things right in the classroom. Uh, they do things right in the weight room. Uh, they're leading by example in what they do. And then they're terrific football players that uh, impact every game. And you hear about Deuce and you hear about Felix so much. The guy that's really unsung is Cooper. Uh, Cooper, uh, all year long, I thought, was a, an all Big 12 offensive lineman and uh, was rewarded with that uh, honor. And uh, I just love the way he goes about his business and works and, and continues to help the young kids as well. But uh, three impactful guys on and off the field for K-State. And then I want to ask about Khalid Duke and see where his, you know, injury 
report is that? Well, we see him on the sideline every day at practice and think, boy, if that kid were out there uh, coming off the edge, it'd give us another guy. It'd give us another player with Felix and Nate and, and Boom and those guys. But um, his, his progress is great. Uh, he's probably going to miss a significant part of spring ball. Uh, we'll do a bunch of movement skills for him, but he's not going to get in any contact. Typically, you don't with that injury that he had, um, but he'll be full go for, for next fall, and, and we'll give him enough uh, individual and, and some other reps in, in spring, but keep him out of, out of contact because he won't be ready for contact yet. But uh, uh, Khalid will be back next year for sure. You mentioned Max. You had any other players switch positions during bowl prep? Um, he's the main one that I that uh, I can think of. Um, I don't think there's been, been anybody else. Max is the main one that he still does some scout team quarterback for us, but he's a tremendous athlete. He's really strong, put some weight on, and uh, we need some help in the secondary. And so um, we decided – we talked to Colin and we talked to Max and Max was all excited about it because he always worked special teams drills for us throughout the season and was a backup on a few teams. And now he's going to get an opportunity to have a full spring and a full winter with Coach Klanerman. And I don't know how far you are in the game planning for LSU, but how different do you envision the offense looking with the new coordinator for this game? Well, it, it can only change so much in this amount of time with us being on the road for two weeks, finals the third week. This is really our first uh, prep that we have had. So probably a few subtle changes, but it's not like we're going to run the wishbone or anything. So, I mean, there'll be a few subtle things. Uh, I guess Russ East is going to be coming in to talk to us. Just wanted to maybe just get your thoughts on the season he had. Phenomenal yeah. season. Uh, one of the, the best uh, – uh, transfer portal additions in the country. And we were fortunate enough to uh, uh, land Russ. Um, had a lot of conversations with his parents. Um, and they believed that this was a great place, just like Russ did. And uh, he's been a great football player, been a great mentor for younger players. Um, he's going to get a chance to play on Sunday. I really believe that. Uh, and uh, has just had a phenomenal season. And, and, uh, once again, was rewarded as well, like he should have been, because he was he was darn good this year. Oh, Elf, probably. I mean, I've watched that enough with with my my kids and stuff, so that's that's always a good one. And you, you guys really, we could probably get Brian Lepack in here and do a Christmas Carol for you. I'm telling you, it's gonna blow your mind. <laughs> the talent that this guy has. Why is he coaching football? Man. Okay. Have a great Christmas, everyone.